Hi, my name is Abe and I'm going to show you how to differentiate sine, cos and tan functions today. So the first thing I'll talk a little bit about is the shape of the functions, then we'll introduce uh, some of the formulas, and finally I'll do some examples with you guys. Cool. So, we know, let's talk about sine and cos first then. You know that sine and cos all look kind of like this, right? No, well, that's the sine curve, the cos curve will look kind of like that. So, you know that sine x looks like that, and cos x, and I'll use some arrows to put these in. There you go. So, they look kind of like each other, right? And what I'm going to show you is that since these are periodic shapes, you know that uh, the graphs continue on, they keep going for many periods onwards. Similarly here, like so. Uh, you expect that their derivative, which is, as you remember, a uh, graph of their gradient, is also going to be repeating. Now it so happens, it so happens that the derivative of the sine function is going to be another sinusoidal function and the derivative of the cos function is going to be the same thing but shifted down. Okay, so on to what they actually are, I'll just quickly tell you because this is not the important part. So the derivative of sine of ax plus b is quite simply a cos ax plus b. So when you differentiate, the sine turns into a cos, and then you put the uh, coefficient of the x, which is a, out the front, and that's it. And on the cos side, you might think, oh, does cos get sine? Almost. Not quite, though. It gets negative sine. So similarly, cos gets replaced by negative sine, and then you put the coefficient of x out the front, and the insides stay exactly the same. Okay, so that's what happens with cos and sine, right? Now, I want to make a note that the cos function is really just sine shifted along the x-axis. So, really, the derivative of one or the other, it's all kind of the same. You're just really shifting things along. So, not much to talk about. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about the tan function then. The tan function is a little more interesting. The tan function looks like this. There's asymptotes involved. And this is y equals tan x. There's asymptotes involved. And what you see is that this function also repeats itself. Does this. So on. Right? So, seeing as tan is a periodic function, the derivative is also, also, going to be periodic. So let's, let's write that under here. The derivative of tan x plus b is equal to a over cos squared x plus b. Or well, some of you may know that as a sec squared x plus b. So yeah, again, what you do is the tan now turns into 1 on cos squared and then you keep the x plus b, and you put an a out the front. That's it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Okay, a couple of very quick examples then. So, the first one. Let's find the derivative of 2 cos half x plus 3. Okay, let's do that. Now this equals... Remember what we want to do. The 2 gets unchanged, but what do you do? You have to put the a out the front. In this case, a is 
Half? Half? What does cos turn into? It turns into negative sine. So I'm going to put a negative out the front. Sine and the insides become unchanged. And so all of this simplifies to negative sine half x plus 3. Keep that inside the screen. Okay, pretty simple, right? Let's do a second one. Let's find the derivative of negative 3 tan of 3x plus pi. Again, not particularly difficult. Follow that formula and what you'll get is, okay, the negative 3 doesn't change, but what happens? You've got to take the a out the front, so the a is 3 over, now the tan becomes cos squared, so you get cos squared on the bottom, and then 3x plus pi. That just comes to negative 9 on cos squared, 3x plus pi. And that's it. Differentiating sine, cos, and tan is very easy. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. See you next time.